Alright, so hi, I'm Morris Rosenthal for PhonerBooks.com, and this is the power supply flowchart out of my book, Computer Repair with Diagnostic Flowcharts. And the idea of a troubleshooting flowchart is to logically lead you through steps so that you don't take a whole bunch of extra replacements and that you don't repeat yourself and go back and forth, did I try this, did I try that, but rather you take a logical approach and hopefully arrive at the fundamental problem as soon as possible. So just jumping right in here, the obvious first question with a power supply failure is power comes on or it doesn't. And we say if no, the power doesn't come on, the first thing to check is whether or not you have a good AC power source. And you might laugh and say, I mean, I've always had this computer plugged in. Yeah, but what if somebody turned off the switch on the power strip accidentally? What if you tripped over the cord and you pulled the plug out? I mean, people literally go out and buy replacement power supplies just because the cord turns out to be a little worked out of the back of the computer. And it's embarrassing. All right, is the 110-220 voltage set? Now that can get unset, and in other words, switch to the wrong side when you move the computer, but it's not that common of a problem anymore, as opposed to when you have a new build, which is over here on the other side, where if you have a live screen, if we say power comes on, live screen, new build, one of the issues you see a lot with new builds now is the screen will come up with a message like auxiliary power connector not connected, or video card power not connected, because these new video cards, some of them require so much power that you have to connect the video card directly to the power supply on a separate lead, which the power supply should feature if it's a reasonable ATX power supply, 400 watts or more. Um, and it's just important that you take that into consideration if you're building a new computer now. You really have to watch the power supply capacity, something you didn't have to do five years ago because any ATX power supply would have been enough. And it goes through these various steps. Does the computer boot on the second try? Do you hear any beeps? Have you installed any new hardware? Your possibility of the power switch failure down here. It just tries to take a very logical approach to these things. Now, what you'll find as you get down here is you say, does it power up on the bench, spin up on another lead? You might not know what I mean by some of these things. I mean, these are very short little descriptions, and these boxes which explain what to do, or oblong shapes, aren't all that detailed either. And the reason is, you can't create a flowchart, you can't fit enough decisions onto a single page if you go over the top describing what you're talking about. So as you go through the book, what you will see is all of these um, symbols repeated in the margins of the pages. And what that does for you is it gives you the ability to look from the flowchart, find where it corresponds with the text, and find out what we're really talking about. Like for good power source, it says, if the power doesn't come on, the first thing to check is that you have a live power source. You don't need a DVM, a digital voltmeter, to check if your power outlet is live. Just unplug the power supply cord and plug in a lamp or a radio. And it has all sorts of simple advice like this and more detailed advice for more technical problems. So this book is used in many small colleges and technical schools where they teach courses in computer repair. And the kids are probably thrilled that it's the cheapest book they're getting at $14.95 if they don't get a discount. So I'm Morris Rosenthal for Phoner Books. And remember these these. Flowcharts are available in draft form on my website, and I hope you check them out.